to just some settings changes and that uh, that looks actually pretty good it's lightened it up just a little bit on the top that that's kind of in line with what I was looking to do so I'm going to click OK on that um, we also um, maybe want to make some other maybe more major changes and that is that it's very light over here because the sun is over here it's very dark down here because that's the part that's away from the sun and um, what if we want to even that out a little bit so let's explore layers and adjustment layers and specifically this is not going to be all about layers and, and go into depth on that we can do that in a in a future webinar to talk more about what layers are and how to, how you can play with them but let's just give a quick example of of something that you can do with layers in this uh, this particular session so um, here's the basic idea we want to take this and darken it a little bit this and take it and make it a little bit lighter there's a concept called overlay, which uh, takes a, a map of, the, of whatever you've drawn, uh, whatever you've defined, and the lightest part of that map is lightened, and the darkest part of that map is darkened underneath it. Well, interestingly enough, if we have an inverse or a negative version of this, that turns into a great map for what we want to do. So, uh, I'll just step you through this. Uh, there's a number of uh, tutorials that we have around that, that do this sort of thing. Uh, and uh, again, just experiment with it and see if it works for you. But let's, uh, let's start by going to Layers, and I'm going to duplicate this layer. You'll see a copy of the layer that shows up over here. I can rename it if I so choose. But all I want to do here is make sure that I have selected it. Uh, I am going to go over to Adjust drop down to color and go into a, a kind of an obscure tool called the channel mixer. Uh, but one of the neat features of the channel mixer is that you can take uh, and make something monochrome. You could do this through desaturating the photo or making it monochrome. You've got a number of different other tools here. I'm just going to click OK with it now as a monochrome. The a monochrome image. The next thing I'm going to do is remember I said that the lightest part of the image will be lightened and the darkest part will be darkened. So if we go to image, type or, or select negative image, now this area down in here will be lightened. This will be darkened in the, in the overlay operation. Let me also suggest that you can kind of get a fairly hard effect by just using the overlay feature in this way. You can also go to um, adjust blur Gaussian blur and give it uh, a little bit of a, of, of a softening effect that will, will soften the results uh, as you actually do the overlay over here in the layers palette which I had opened by the way if it's not open on your screen just go to palettes and go to layers uh, and that will bring it up uh, I have basically two things that I want to be able to play with. One is the opacity, how much of this, this gray map is going to show on top of it. And the other is the blending mode. And the blending mode specifically we're going to talk, use here is overlay. And so immediately when I apply it, and I've set the opacity down a little bit, you'll see that this is not quite as bright and this is a bit brighter. So if I change the visibility here by clicking on the little eyeball, you'll see that the, the change that it's made. I can adjust the opacity to increase the effect or reduce the effect. Uh, you can also see that it's changing a little bit of that hue of, uh, of, of orange and red on the horizon. So that's what, um, that's what you can do with this. Now, so given if you like this particular sort of overall change, um, that's great. You can also, by the way, select this map and go in and paint out areas that you do or don't want or adjust areas that you do or don't want to be modified. So there's a lot of, lot of, uh, of, uh, of things that you can do with this to enhance or even out the, the, the lighting balance in a photo. If you do like it uh, and you're, you're happy or once you're happy with it um, and you're going to save this out, you, you now because you have layers you'll need to save it out as a PSP image or you would be able to also 
uh, flatten it to save it out as a uh, JPEG or a TIFF or other sorts of flat uh, images. To flatten it, the easiest way is just to right click over here, go down to merge, and uh, this the, use the flatten tool. So merge down will take the layer I'm on down to the next layer. Merge all visible will merge all of the visible, the, all of the ones that have the eyeballs turned on on them. Uh, it, and uh, flatten all is just just a global sort of flatten. You can now see that 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 change is baked into the background that we have. So that's just to uh, whet your appetite for some of the types of things you can do with adjustment layers and uh, some things which are a little um, a little bit more interesting there. So let me um, now hop back over to the organizer. Change topics, change to where we're at. Let's talk a little bit about raw. Raw images are really technically the best image that the camera can produce because it's the raw sensor data. It's the raw, unprocessed, everything is there data right off of what the camera saw. Um, it doesn't have any processing. It doesn't have any other uh, other changes to it. It has information that the camera thought at the time or, or was used for making the shot at the time, but it doesn't have any processing on it. So in X2 um, and X2 Ultimate, we have the ability to load camera raw files. So it's there. You can load them in. They come in as 16-bit images. You can do, uh, do all of your editing, editing in that program. One of the critical things that we wanted to make sure that we, uh, we have in the program is the ability for you, the photographer, to adjust the process of developing the raw image. And to do that, we've included a, a, a tool that we call the Camera Raw Lab. Now, Camera Raw Lab will come up when you open a photo, and it will show you a number of different types of changes that you can make to the raw photo. Now, make to the raw photo, let me clarify that. Raw photos are treated as read-only. We're going to remember aspects of, of what you changed separate from the photo. When you come back to it, we'll remember that if you, if you want us to, uh, but we're not going to actually change the raw data. Uh, the results of this particular uh, change, if I go in and adjust the shadows a little bit, maybe up the brightness just a little bit in this particular photo, um, make a couple of other changes, yeah, I like it maybe a little warmer. There we go. So if I like this, I can, uh, I can leave this save image settings turned on. If I ever going to use this again, it's just going to save, save it. So when I come back, I'm going to have that, have those settings associated with this. But notice down at the bottom, another change that we've made here. It, we've got an edit button, which will take us to the full editor, and we can make all of the editing changes we want to at that point. It converts it to RGB, 16-bit. Uh, it's no longer a raw image at that point. You're going to save it out as a TIFF or a, or a JPEG or PNG or whatever your preferred file format is. Uh, but we also have a concept of apply. And apply is really very powerful. If I click on this, I'm, it's going to take those settings that I've associated with that photo. It's going to remember them as being associated with that photo. And it's then going to give me the little blue pencil here in uh, the organizer. The blue pencil says that there are raw edits that have been made to this photo. And I can right-click on that, and I can capture those changes, those dialogue changes, the white balance or brightness or whatever else that might have happened. I can capture those and then I can click on other raw photos and uh, apply those changes to those photos. So in a case where I shot dozens of photos at this night softball game, which I did, uh, all of those photos may need a very, very similar change. And this is a very quick way of getting one photo right applying those changes to a number of photos and being able to very, very easily uh, then have that whole set uh, kind of in the ballpark, so to speak, uh, on what the exposure and, and um, saturation and other of those changes was supposed to be. So given that uh, we have that ability to do um, that, uh, capture the settings changes from, from one RAW and apply to another RAW, we also have that ability to, to do it with regular photos. So 
changes that I've made to a photo, and these tip 